Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. If for some reason this popped up into your recommendation feed and you're not subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate you guys consider doing that. If you want to get notifications of all my new stuff popping up, go ahead and hit that bell icon as well. All right, so First and foremost, before we get out of, just get it right out of the way, you can tell from the backdrop that I have moved into a new home. Uh, let me know what you guys uh, think of the new backdrop. I think this is what I'm going to do from now on. Um, what has been your experience with moves? Have you had any horror stories? Sound off in the comment section down below. I would love to hear some of the horror stories. I can, I can go, uh, go on for hours about what I've had to do to get into this house. So <laughs> needless to say, I'm excited. Uh, I hope you guys are excited too to see, you know, where I live. And uh, just wanted to create a backdrop for you guys that was a little bit more personable. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. I would really appreciate that. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this update video is to kind of let you guys know that, hey, I've been moving. So it's been a couple of weeks since I put out a video. I had to prepare to move, to actually move, and then to get nestled into my new spot. So um, it, it's, been, it's been a journey over the last couple of weeks, to say the least. Uh, with that being said, I also wanted to give you guys a heads up on what's to come. I'm going to be doing a review video on the PSA or Palmetto State Armory Classic AR-15. That's going to be a 20-inch barreled version of the AR-15 or basically an M16A4 clone-ish. And uh, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about why a build kit might be cheaper than a fully assembled rifle uh, for a very specific reason, whether or not a 20-inch build is going to be good for home defense, and then an overview of the uh, rifle itself. Also going to be looking at this guy right here. That is the Dead Air Sandman S. Um, this suppressor comes in three different lengths, the L, the S, and then the K. Uh, this is going to be the Goldilocks of the three, so the one right in the sweet spot, in my opinion. We'll talk about the process of purchasing a suppressor. Uh, we'll talk about the suppressor itself, and then, you know, everything that goes along with it as well. Uh, we'll be doing an update video on this right here. This is my home defense setup. It is a 300 blackout uh, set on an Aero Precision M4E1 uh, receiver set. So we'll talk about everything that I've done to kind of update it and change it as well. I'm gonna be doing a uh, review on the M17 and a comparison video to the previous service rifles, or excuse me, service pistols of the US Army. I'm an Army vet, so naturally I wanted to get my hands on an M17, take a look at that, and then compare and contrast it to the M9 and the M1911 as well. Also gonna be looking at budget pistols. I've got two in mind. I think these two are the ones that fly underneath the radar for a lot of people. So uh, these will be pistols priced below $400. Neither one of them are going to be a Taurus pistol. So just get that right out of your head. Uh, but uh, like I said, these probably uh, are not thought about. I know a lot of people know about them, but uh, people probably don't think about these when it comes time to purchase a new pistol. And I wanted to do a comparison contrast on both of those pistols. So there'll be three videos coming out on that as well. Also have training coming up here in the second half of the year. I'll be training with Masada Ayub in October and then uh, John Lovell, the Warrior Poet Society. I'll be training with him in November as well. So a lot of things going on. Hopefully if everything goes back to normal at the beginning of 2021, I will be in Vegas for SHOT Show. Hopefully uh, that's actually kind of, that's kind of my vacation for the year <laughs> to be honest with you. So we'll see how that turns out um, as we get uh, through the rest of this year. The last thing I wanted to talk about uh, is something that is a little touchy for me, um, and that's gonna be this shirt. I've wore this shirt in a previous video and someone had uh, called me a white supremacist or a Ku Klux Klan member or something to that effect. And to be honest with you, you know, uh, I really don't, 
pay much attention to that, but I wanted to set the record straight. Um, for those of you that don't know, this is the city flag for Wichita. That's where I was born and raised. I spent the first 22 years of my life in uh, that city, and it has a very special place in my heart. ICT is the airport code for Wichita, and then AF, you guys know what that means. So I'm Wichita as bleep. <laughs> Uh, but um, this shirt is one of my favorite shirts and uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, the color pattern that was chosen for this is to uh, pay homage to the Wichita Indian tribe who settled in South Central Kansas, Oklahoma, and Northern Texas. Uh, they were kind of a nomadic tribe, so they would move with the uh, game herds, so buffalo, deer, so on and so forth. Um, as the, as the herds moved, they would move with them. Uh, so that's why South Central Kansas, Oklahoma, and Northern Texas. And here recently, I was able to finish a book called Empire of the Summer Moon. If you guys are interested, I've got a link to it down in the description below. It's a great book talking about specifically the Comanche Indians. Uh, it talks about the westward expansion into Texas, uh, talks about a uh, trail of tears, it talks about uh, you know the treaties that were set up and broke on both sides, the atrocities that had happened on both sides. It's a very holistic look at not only the Comanche Indians, but also some of the other uh, indigenous tribes of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico. Uh, the Wichita tribes are talked about that. Uh, they talk about that in that book quite a bit. Um, they talk about the Treaty of Medicine Lodge, which is just outside of Wichita, which is something I uh, thought was pretty interesting. And so if you guys are interested, if you're history buffs like I am, please check that book out. I've got it down in the description below. It's a really, really good book. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Um, sound off in the comment section down below. What is your heritage? Um, the uh, My heritage is German-Irish. Um, for the most part, but I also have a great grandparent um, on both sides. Uh, I have a great grandmother and a great grandfather who were both um, full blood Native American. Uh, one was Cherokee and the other was a tribe out of Illinois. They're known as the Blanket People. That's really all I know. I've never claimed to be Native American. Uh, I'm not Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I would never uh, have the hubris to say that, oh, I'm Native American, but I do have some heritage uh, that is connected to the indigenous tribes in the United States. And I, and I, I cherish that. And I'd like to hear what you guys uh, think about that, what your heritage is, all of that. Sound off in the comment section down below. I would really appreciate it really all I got this time. Thanks so much for swinging by. I do apologize for the delay in videos, but we've got more coming and I can't wait to share it with you guys. I can't wait to hear from y'all as well. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. See you guys later. Bye y'all.